Hi everyone, Jeremy here from Flatware Creations. We're going to be making whale tails today. Three tablespoons and two teaspoons for an order. They want the, the stems twisted over to make the pendant. So I'll be using those. I'll be using my Sharpie Ultra Fine Point. I like this because it doesn't just wipe off. It will come off, but it doesn't take you really having to just barely touch it and it comes off like a lot of pens. So we're going to be using the templates from flatwearable.net. I had my own, but these are so much easier. And they have the dead center of each of them. So as we go along, we can get the trace on there. Okay, but first we've got to flatten these guys. So this is the flat wearable. I, you're gonna hear me say flat wearable a bunch because this whole system was theirs. The stencils is theirs. And this is the new 3D press bar. And it has this spoon bender on here. But what I do is I put my spoons in here and always try and keep it on your block. So if you just have this little guy, try and keep this on the block. What I do is I'm gonna dimple the top. So I just have a slight dimple in there and I'm gonna kind of go around. Done. So back here we go. I'm just going to start tracing on them. Okay, so they want regular whale tails. So what I'm trying to do is match up these corners here. I want to make sure that my stem or handle is centered here. And then I'm looking at these points right here. They're centered. So I'm just going to trace this guy. And that's it. I'm going to take this up just a little bit higher. All right, so we obviously can't use that one on this one. This one here looks like it will work for the teaspoon. So I'm just fixing these centers. I like them to go up a little bit farther. So I will be using three aught blades. I always keep out the one that's in the saw. I have a whole set of these tubes from I think four to aught eight or eight aught. But this is what I have in the saw right now. My jeweler saw. This was a cheap one off eBay. That was adjustable back here. That allows me to use shorter blades. So if this thing breaks off, I can use it still. But the teeth are pointed down. So on the downstroke, you're actually cutting. So I need one more thing, my wax. So you can use beeswax, you can use candles. Some people use Burr Life from Rio Grande. Pretty much anything waxy you can use as lubricant. You're just gonna basically fill your teeth with it and then you can start your cut. I like to put my blade against the edge and bring my piece to where I wanna start. That helps me get started and then I'll pull it away and I'll start following my line. And at a certain point, you're going to feel and hear the saw change. So right there, it just changed wax my teeth and we'll keep going now i'm just barely pushing now here i'm not pushing forward i'm just kind of holding it backwards a little bit as i turn my saw once i get my saw blade turned around it's in those transition parts where you're twisting the blade, where you break about 90% of your blades. I can't believe it, I'm staying inside the line. So as you get towards the end of your cut, you wanna kind of move it to the back right here so that the saw blade one doesn't jump too far forward. If you have your finger like this and it comes through, you're gonna cut right into your finger. And this thing, from experience, will slice right through your finger. Our first whale tail. I know a lot of people that do these with Dremels and it all works. I just like this way. One, I get to saw. I like sawing. If you notice also, I'm turning the piece, not my hand. You'll, know, you'll catch me moving my hand every once in a while, but for the most part, I'm moving the piece that I'm cutting and I'm keeping my saw in the same place. So what I'm gonna do here, so if you have the chance, go ahead and wax your blade, but I'm pulling it backwards just enough to get the teeth not to catch as I turn this. And you'll feel, you'll hear one of the teeth start to, to grab. Once that happens, you can start to get the blade where you want it and off we go. There we go. 
Another pretty whale tail. All right, on to the big guys. You can kind of see how it's rippled right here. There's only a little bit of that rippling that goes up into here. And most of that we can get out whenever we uh, finish the piece up. So again, same thing. I wax my blade, putting my blade against the edge, bring my saw down to it, and away we go. Big whale tail. All right, so let's finish up one of these little guys. First, I'm gonna take my little Dremel tool here. What I'm looking for is, see all the little saw marks there? What we're doing is we're taking those off and there's a little burr on the edge. So that's what I'm removing right now. So I'm gonna get off these lines and then we're gonna go into this little crevice here in the middle with a small diamond bit. And we're gonna, we're gonna just clean that up in there. So I'm using the glare from the light to be able to see where I've been missing. And then I'm gonna take this and very carefully go along the edge to take off that top burr. We'll do the back the same way. And I'm just gonna take the points off a little bit. We want it to look pointy, but we don't want it to be able to hurt somebody. The rest of that I get taken off in the tumbler. So I still have my little lines in the middle. I'm going to use a tiny little triangle piece. There, it's just a little diamond burr. Remember, we're just trying to get the lines off. So this is all still smooth. So I'm gonna take this over to my buffer tool here and I'll try not to make you guys sick. So you get to look at me for a second. So this wheel here is called a fiber wheel and it goes up my my arbor this little piece here goes to a point and it has threads on it that spin the opposite direction of your motor so whenever you start the motor it just winds itself on there normally i use a dust mask but since we're just using this one i'm going to hold my breath and i'm just going to try and take off the edges here so what we have now is a nice smooth tail. So all our lines are gone. Everything's nice and neat and clean. This is my red rouge. And then this is my white buffing wheel. So I'm going to just go to the red right now just to clean this up. So this piece is looking good. Nice and shiny. I don't have any tool marks. So now we're going to cut this and we're going to bend it. And you're probably asking, how long am I going to cut it? I don't know. <laughs> that helps you a lot, doesn't it? This is a pair of snap ring pliers that had little tips on the end. I ground the tips off. This was one of the first tools that I started using because it was strong enough to bend the silverware. As you upgrade, you get these graduated pliers that have different sizes on them. Um, I'm going to be using them to kind of gauge how big the loop I want. So I'm looking at this piece right here. Uh, make sure you're making your bend the right way. I always like to have the front of the spoon out, but we're gonna move up a little bit. You need to have enough room for this to go around. So if I use this guy, I'm gonna need probably about this much. So teaspoon, let's get a measurement here. From the top of the tail, here's one inch. This is two inches, that's one and a half. I'm gonna say by eyeballing it, we're gonna want the one and a half inch mark. Always keep the piece that you want on your side of the cutters. All right, now we're committed to this measurement. Real quick to the belt sander. You can use a file to do this too, but I just basically took the edge off. So I'm gonna take this guy and see if I can bend it over with my finger. I cannot. So I'm gonna grab my leather piece here. This is a thick piece of leather. I put this in and then I highlight the top with black ink. So I'm gonna go, I think it's probably the inch mark. Yeah, it's about an inch. It was an inch and a half. So I'm gonna go to half an inch from the top of the whale tail. Let's start tapping this guy over. Once you get that bent, now you can start your bending on your anvil or vise. So now I have this up here. This is just a piece of paneling board. So I have the loop the size that I want, roughly. 
once you get it started you can hammer it to the shape you want now, i think i'm a little too long there see how it's a little bit longer so i'm going to cut off probably that other half inch maybe a quarter inch all right same thing i'm going to go to the belt sander i'll be right back so i'm just grinding off the inside of this there we go so it's nice and clean we're actually going to downsize now because remember we only need it to be big enough for a necklace to get through there i have this guy lined up in the one i want and i'm going to tilt this all the way around from this point i am curled that way a little bit you can kind of see how it's angled i'm going to put it back in here now we have our loop but you can still see my finger through the back side we're just going to take this and hammer it straight down now we have nice closed back and it's round. And when we lay it on its face, it should lay pretty much flat. And this is ready for a chain and a necklace. All right, one down. I'm gonna do all of those steps all over again for the rest of them. So this one's cut, this one's cut. This is just a piece of one by board that I had and I made my own block. I just took and cut out a corner of it. I've never had a bench block. Someday I eventually will, but I think it's gonna be a little trickier for me to start on because I'm used to kind of cutting at an angle. So what you're left with now is some duck feet. <laughs> Uh, this could be good frog's feet too. So now we have our five whale tails. Three and two equals five. Okay, so I'm doing the same exact steps that I did for the one. Nice and clean, get our tips. So you wanna watch out for what I just did. Did you see how this flipped over and rolled around on me? So now watch what is on the front. I got a couple tap marks here where this touched it. And I don't want them there. So I'm gonna show you how I take them out. I forgot what kind of wheels they're called, but they're basically a plastic wheel and they're impregnated with a sanding or some grinding agent. Okay, so it's gonna be dark for a second, but these are my marks right here. So I'm gonna use this guy. I'm just barely gonna to touch it to it. The other thing you can use are these rubber wheels here, and I think that might do a better job. And remember, whenever you're getting out tool marks, you really want to blend them in to what's around them. You make little circles around it. And I'm changing the angle on them. Now, because this is a finished piece, I'm actually going backwards down the sandpaper size. So I started with the finest and I'm working my way down because it's basically a finished piece. So I don't want to mess it up too much, but at the same time I want to get, get them out of there. So it's out of there now, bring it back to shine. That's good enough to get in the, the buffer right now. All right, I won't be able to talk for a minute, but I'll be right back. Okay, so we have our four pieces. Now let's move over here. Ooh. <laughs> so we're gonna start bending these now. You can go back to the fiber wheel for the end of this piece if you want, but for the most part, it's gonna be tucked on and never seen again. If you start out here towards the end, you can normally get a better bend on it, an easier bend. So I'm using my hand and I'm coming around and I'm grabbing it and I'm starting the bend. If you don't have enough strength in your hands, like my hand is killing me right now, so I'm gonna do this. Just enough to get it started. Okay, so now we can bring it down to here. So we've got our bend going in there. I'm gonna drop it down one size. And if I were doing this with my other pliers, I would have been back here at the biggest part and drawing that down. But I'm gonna use these, the middle section. But I have tool marks also on it now. You can kind of see the bright shiny spot 
as it rotated around. Yeah, you can see it right there on top. I'm gonna take my drum sander and just kind of lightly, lightly touch those pieces for that, that bit. And basically I'm just blending them in so it looks like we wanted them to be there. <laughs> okay, so this one is pretty much done. It's ready for the tumbler. Let's get these other two big ones done real quick. Oh, and you remember that little bump I was talking about in the beginning? I'm gonna take that out now nice even taps this one i was able to turn pretty good this one i've used the big end of this without coming around to see how much farther down the tail came or this came so i'm gonna put this in there and i'm gonna push my pliers are flat i'm gonna push this piece this little piece down and it's offset again for that i'm just gonna put this down here like this there you go that's nice and flat and my hole is closed so big part around there actually let's use the whole thing in the middle piece this time mm, that definitely harder to bend the reason i'm hitting the top side is i like to try and get the angle where it will lay nice and flat so everything looks good we have one little tool mark here okay and it looks good okay so if you notice it's pretty much all the same but what continues to change is the backs so as you experiment and go through see what you like best and where you like best all of these were basically cut at an inch and a half from the top of here's my beginning mark so from the top of the tail this is what i'm talking about to here one and a half inches this is where i cut almost all of them but as you adjust you can see the different shapes coming along and this one it wouldn't touch so as i hammered it it flattened out a little bit you got to watch out for that that's why i stuck the, the tool back in there to make sure that it didn't go flat there we go everything looks good let's get it all tossed in the tumbler and out to the customer ah that's me each tail is basically a fingerprint because every single tail is shaped a little different. I thought that was kind of cool. Thank you for continuing to join me and going through this experience with me. I'll see you guys all later.